bring in my brother. Uh, where's where's he at? Bring him bring him up here, please. <laughs> bring him my, my 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 brother my brother. You know my brother uh, Enrique. I do. We've been on panels together. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing there? I'm amazing, man. I'm just happy to be here. Good. It's a family affair tonight. Yeah. yeah I, you know, the yeah. only thing is I wish yeah. I had a cap. Where, where's yeah. my cap? You well, know? you know, that's how we well, do that, it, man. That's, that's just because yeah. you still got hair. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, I, I'll tell yeah, you. you it, the wash and wear hair. Kind of. man, I, I'll tell you, Enrique, last time, last time I had my brother on, he was like, well, you need to start saying you're big brother. And I said, no problem. You need to start saying you're good looking brother when you talk. <laughs> about me. Oh, here so, we go. Here we go. Well, here I am right in the middle of you two. So let's tonight <laughs> give a brotherly love. You know, yes, well, right. so um so so kind of it's two two things here. And you know I what one one hundred black parents is an organization that this kind of what we're saying uh, catching children upstream and, and showing them different things and what's going on and everything else. But I kind of wanted to preface this conversation by hopping in the time machine in, in, in a name that came up earlier. And so we'll say his name again, Tyrone Love. Um, yeah. You know, Ty, Tyrone Love was somebody, you know, to, you know, you talk about doing everything right, pillar of the community, worked with young people. Um, and man, he was he was murdered there on, on basically on 23rd and Cherry, where so many other people have been murdered. I was at almost 11 years ago now. Um, and yeah, right. And so this is a, this is a clip. Let me play this clip right here. This is a clip. And then you can tell this is old school. Cause this is back when Shamari stone was still around. This is uh, from 2011 Como four news. Seattle police are asking for the public's help in solving the two year old murder of Tyrone love. Investigators say they've had a tough time because witnesses simply won't cooperate. Como four Shamari stone reports officers hope a new approach will offer up new clues. I'm not at peace. Christina Bradford wishes she could wipe away the pain as she grieves over the senseless murder of her brother, Tyrone Love. It is just not fair that this happened to him. A gunman killed the club promoter two years ago while he walked home on East Cherry Street from his job at Pioneer Square. He is wonderful. He tried to help everybody. He was always working with kids and always pushed people to stay in school. Tyrone Love was an incredible young man who made some very valuable contributions to the community here. Seattle police detectives have received. I'll cut a little short right there, but Cunt, yeah. I know that the, the talk about how the, the murder of Tyrone Love all those years ago has impacted some of the things uh, that, that you're doing in the community, even around 100 black parents. Yeah, you know what I always say, man, first of all, rest in peace, Tyrone, and really rest in peace, Roberta, his mother. Um, I didn't believe that a person could die from a broken heart until she passed away shortly after Tyrone. Um, and so, you know, the irony is that me and Tyrone would walk around the CD and we had those uh, Break the Silence posters. He was actually engaged. We were working on violence prevention and reduction uh, when he was killed. Uh, and so, uh, you know, with the Silent War Project, as, as you know, um, and just over the years, it, it's one of the things that's really made me realize that we have to just start earlier. You know, I've been working with high schoolers and, and, and most definitely uh, 18 to 24 for years. But, um, you know, it just really made me realize that we have to get further and further upstream uh, and, and, and really surround our, our children with love. Um, you know, like Tyrone Love, honestly. And so, you know, it, he definitely impacted a lot of things. I would call him my protege. He he was, I felt like he was a young Chikundi, if you will. He he really was of service to his community. And, and you know, that's why we, we named the scholarship after him and, and we continue to keep his legacy alive today. And we didn't let the, uh, the media uh, vilify him, um, you know, at the time because when he was murdered oftentimes. And, 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 and to your point, uh, as you talked about earlier with Alicia, people always go to, well, what was he doing there, you know, or, or this or that. He, he walked around the CD at all times of night like he didn't have a car. You know, and like Connor, when he, you know, he was just in front of his house. But uh, oftentimes we go to, you know, or the media it initially goes to, well, what was this person doing there? We all have a right to live, as as uh, as Willard would say. You know, nobody should be taking anybody's life, and most certainly Tyrone's life shouldn't have been taken that night.
Right. I want to I want to jump in and, and then I'll, I'll let Enrique throw a question over to you. But I wanted to jump in right here and talk about this program that you've been up to this year. Of course, COVID has kind of put a kibosh on it. But that's the, the Young Black Males and Females Weekend at Camp Orkila and where where you're taking kids out of the city and showing them a new experience um, over over at Camp Orkila. I'll just play this clip right here. You did it. How you feel, Khalil? How you feel? Oh, yeah. You did that. You did that. All right. Yeah, you had a question, Enrique? Yeah, I, I was curious as to um, how was it difficult to get parents to, to buy in to what you wanted to do? Because, you know, in many ways, you're talking about uh, kind of giving different experiences to young people and, and kind of taking them out of an environment to give them something else. So did they all jump into that? Do they think, you know, this is the way to go? You know, we got a lot of pushback in a lot of different ways. And quite frankly, a lot of parents only let their kids know because I'm a trusted, you know, member of the community. I'm, people have known me for years just as DJ and as a, as a city employee and all these other roles that I play in the community. So a lot of people let their kids come just because I personally was going. Uh, and then I got a lot of pushback from other parents because it was, you know, one year we did it during football season and people were so upset. <laughs> Uh, Cause it's just different, you know. It's a whole different thing. Many of the kids had had never been outside of the city before. Uh, you know, one funny story I like to tell uh, Rike is that we had a young person get on the ferry at Anacortes to go to uh, Camp Orkila, and he called me over. He said, "Mr. Shikundi, Mr. Shikundi." I said, "What's up?" He said, "Here, can I, I got to ask you a question?" And then he said, "Where's the seatbelt?" And that's when I realized we were doing the right thing, right? We're on the ferry going to Anacortes. Imagine 250 black men and boys at Anacortes. I mean, you could really cut the fear with a knife uh, in, in, on the ferry and in the waiting area. We, you know, people hadn't seen that before, right? 250 black men and boys uh, not at a sporting event. Where do you see that in Seattle? And so, yeah, it was an amazing event, and we're going to continue to do it. We did the same thing with uh, with the with the with the women, uh, but it was a, it was a different experience. Obviously, I wasn't a part of that because it was Women's Weekend, but uh, it was really more intergenerational, where we had the grandmother, the mother, and the daughter there uh, at that uh, at the African American Females Weekend. But uh, yeah, it all starts with trust. You have to have a trusted ambassador, somebody that that folks trust to be able to put something like that together. Plus, you bring up something I think real interesting, and I'll really get back to you in a second here, Omari. And I think we've been talking about this in the past hours strongly. I mean, we, we know about it in, in the sake of COVID, the fact that, that we have all these disparities in our society. And this only brings the fact, brings it up even that much more. That it's, why would people be concerned that, you know, African-American parents bring their 200 kids onto a, a ferry to do that? You know, these are the things, folks, that we need to move beyond. It's 2020. And um, I, I think right now with where we are in this country, the generational changes, this is where we have to make that shift. And we have that opportunity to do it and to try to all work, work together. It's a hard thing. Yes. Yeah, most certainly, you know, um, but to your point earlier, Enrique, I was waiting in the waiting room and I heard you. And, and I know that a lot of people have talked about the resources and the things we need. But you know what? 
Um, one of the so it's a it's a both and situation for me. I I most certainly uh, continue to advocate for more resources to our community to uh, to uh, uh, address this generational harm uh, uh, and trauma that we have experienced as a community. But I also want to tap into the resiliency that we have as Black people, uh, and we've always been able to circle the wagons and build a village, right? And so with this event, you know, uh, I just had people come volunteer, and I said we need. We need you. We need you. You know, are, is anybody getting paid? No, nobody got paid. We didn't have any, you know, everybody there was a volunteer, you know, yeah. and I don't get paid from this organization. Fortunately, I, I do have a different job that I can work at. But the point is, is that we have, you know, uh, a, a, while we continue to talk about this deficit of resources in our community, we have the greatest resource ever. We have motivated people that love us. And if you love us and you, and you really want to be involved, we can put it together and kids can smell that. They know if you love us, right? So yes, on the one hand, we want to continue to fight for those resources. Give us what we deserve so we can build community. But then two, you know, we got to get out here and do what we can. Right. Every school, like obviously within COVID right now, is different. But every school is looking for a, uh, a monitor to be on the playground. Every school is looking for an adult black male to just come in and spend some time in the library. Like these are things that we do not need any grant to do. We don't need no resources to do. You know, we, we, we pop bottles. We go to Vegas, you know. And what I tell people all the time is, you know what? Take one, two hours of PTO and go visit a school. Yeah. The word is humanity. Yeah. There, humanity there. and love. Yeah. There yeah. it is. Cun, you know, uh, so I'm, I'm calling you my, my older brother because I'm waiting for you to call me. Wait a minute. I, I don't want to feel like I'm lost. Here. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yeah, I'm I calling you my brother. Oh, yeah. Good looking brother. <laughs> there you go. Good looking brother. Got it out of you. Cun, thanks for joining. Uh,